Maybe you saw the PC build I did the other day. Maybe you're curious if it runs Cyberpunk. Maybe you're curious if your PC runs Cyberpunk. Let's find out. Hey guys, it's Chris with Tech5. Today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different. Now, you may have noticed I'm not actually sitting in front of my computer like I usually am. And that's because the focus of today's video is going to be the PC behind me. Now, the PC behind me, I did a how to build just the other day. If you'd like to check that out, you can catch it up here. But that's gonna be the focus today. And we're gonna be looking at this PC, seeing how powerful it is, seeing if it can run Cyberpunk, seeing how well it runs Cyberpunk, as well as some other games, and going over the parts and showing you guys the prices and how I got them for the prices that I did. And if you'd like to get them yourself, you'll know how to do so. So stick around if you're interested. Let's get into it. Now this is the PC we're going to be looking at today. This entire setup was about $600 and we're going to be checking to see if this PC can run Cyberpunk, how well it runs Cyberpunk, as well as some other games and we're going to be looking at the hardware piece by piece of this particular PC and giving you the prices of each one that I paid and some things that you may want to consider if you decide to build your own PC. Now first up we have the Pic Tech RGB keyboard. This keyboard was only $27 and it's honestly a really beautiful keyboard. The RGB of this keyboard is true to the color and has the right amount of brightness. The only downside is it can be a bit loud. Next we have the Pictech RGB gaming mouse and this is another Pictech piece of hardware that is just well done. This cost $20 and I gotta say I really appreciate the honeycomb design. Moving on to the monitor we have a 22 inch 1080p Lenovo IPS monitor. This is a monitor that I was able to pick up for $75 on Newegg. The monitor comes with AMD FreeSync and has up to a 75Hz refresh rate. Now the headset that we have comes from one of the more expensive brands, but this headset we were able to get for a great deal. I was able to pick up the Corsair HS60 for $40. This headset is a pretty reliable headset and puts out quality sound. Now that we've gone over all the peripherals, let's talk about what's under the hood. Let's see what's inside this tower. Our motherboard is a B460M Intel motherboard that we were able to pick up for $65. For our CPU, we used the Core i3-10100 and we got this thing for $99. Our RAM, we used the Oloy DDR4-3000 MHz for $54. Our storage, we were able to pick up an M.2 with 256GB for $30. Our power supply is an EVGA 500 watt that we picked up for 50. Now the real hero of the build was the graphics card. I was able to pick up this R9 Fury second hand at $100 and this thing is comparable to the power of a 1070. For a PC case I was able to pay $40. We went with Cooler Master's Masterbox Q300L. And I decided to throw a little flare on there. This is completely optional. I decided to get some cable extensions to just kind of make the build pop just a little bit. Completely optional. You don't have to do this, but this did cost me another $30. With everything added together, we're looking at about $630 in total. Now, remember, you can go ahead and use some pre-owned pieces if you can find them for a good enough price. There's risk involved when you buy secondhand stuff, but most of the time, the people that I've always bought from, I've always gotten good things. Now, I said we were going to try to see just how powerful this PC was. So I decided to open up Time Spy and try to get an idea just how powerful this thing was and what kind of performance I could expect. And I gotta say, I was a little bit concerned when I first started running Time Spy because I was getting stuttering, I was getting lag, and I was only seeing about... 30 frames per second, around 30, 35 to 32 frames per second when I was running this thing. And the score really didn't make it look like I was gonna have a great time either. So I was really distraught, but I did not let that stop me. I still was going to run Cyberpunk. I still was gonna try to see and just get an idea what we would be looking at if we tried to play Cyberpunk on this PC. 
So the game had opened up. That was already a win in my book. But I had to go ahead and get in the settings and see if I could turn this down and really get a good experience or see what it was I could handle in the system. And the system already had made adjustments and went with a medium setting and I decided to turn down the texture quality to medium as well. And as you can see here, I wanted to showcase some of the settings so you guys could see what I had it on so you didn't really think I was making anything up and you're seeing this firsthand and seeing me play it. Now, getting into the game, I was kind of impressed because I was seeing frame rates that were between 35 to 50, and I really was kind of shocked. I wasn't expecting to see that, but I wanted to do a side mission to really get an idea of what we were dealing with and see if I had any stuttering or anything of that nature. I wanted to do a little bit of stress testing, and I really didn't see any. The overall experience was really good. It stayed locked in above that 35 and it was just smooth for me. But I gotta do other games, I gotta do other tests. So Apex Legends is where we go next. Now with Apex Legends, I was able to run everything at high settings, and I wasn't too shocked by that because Apex Legends is a fairly optimized game at this point, but everything was just locked in at the 60 FPS, and it didn't stutter, it didn't do any sort of lagging at all, which was definitely really, really good to see. It's what you want to see, especially when you're playing an FPS shooter. But I do want to say I usually play with a controller, so don't be talking trash because I sucked right here and couldn't get the kill and finish it off. If you want to see me in a private game, you know, hit me up, whatever. Catch me outside. How about that? So our next game that we decided to go with was going to be Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Now, I know this game had an automatic benchmark and I wanted to go ahead and take advantage of it and see what kind of performance we would get on this game particularly. And I was able to keep everything at high settings on this game and still was able to keep a respectable frame rate. We ended up ending the test with an average of 70 FPS and I was I was pretty pleased with seeing this. Time Spy was not telling the truth in my opinion. I am definitely seeing better numbers with running the actual games than I was during the Time Spy numbers and score. It just didn't add up for me. But the proof's in the pudding. You know, the games are running pretty well. It's doing everything that you would want it to do when you're playing a video game. Night, we were able to run everything at epic settings and we were able to keep a 60 fps the entire time that we played the only time that we had any sort of dip was in the pre-lobby which i have seen in the past with other uh, pcs that i've built it seems to be a fairly common thing so other than that during the gameplay and during combat i never once dropped below that 60 frames i stayed locked in at 60 fps the whole time and I am definitely not a Fortnite player. I used to be early on, but first game in, got the win. Now guys, as you can see, this PC is actually pretty good. Now, if you are considering getting into the PC space and you're not sure where to start, or you don't have too much money to actually invest into a PC, this is a really good spot to be in. When I first started getting to more custom PCs and building computers, I started in about the five, six hundred dollar range and it kind of just went up from there. But this PC is actually a lot more powerful than what I had started out with. And I'm actually still impressed by how well it runs Cyberpunk. That game's had its own issues with hardware and not being able to scale correctly. And it's just surprising to see 40 to 50 frames at medium settings on Cyberpunk. So in it, it having not too many problems. So I, I was glad to see that. I'm surprised. You're not going to be gated from any game. You're going to be able to play any game that's out on this PC setup. Now you may not be able to play with ray tracing and the highest settings and running at 120 FPS, but guys, you're going to still have a good experience on this PC and that's that's saying something. That really is. If you were interested in picking up any of the parts that I used in this PC build, I will have some links in the description for you to click on. So they'll be there. Just look for them. 
Now, once again, I did do a how to build a PC build on this particular PC setup. So if you are interested in that, click it here. It'll be there. You can watch that if you're trying to learn how to build a PC yourself. So just know it's there. Now guys, I gotta shout out my Patreons. You know I gotta do that. So guys, thank you so much for supporting the channel. Outside of being a subscriber, I appreciate it. I appreciate it, I appreciate it. Thank you so very much. That's gonna do it for the video. As always, if you do have any questions, concerns, confusions, whatever it may be, ask. I don't mind helping, I promise. I'm really trying to build something for you guys here and I hope you'll wanna be a part of it. A simple like, share, subscribe, comment, they go so far for the channel, it really helps me continue to make content and grow. Now, if there was something you didn't like, thought I could have done better, whatever it may be, feel free, leave a thumbs down. I just ask you to let me know what it was so I can continue to improve and do better. Now, with that said, I hope you can like, I hope you can subscribe. And if not, well, I hope to catch you in another one. And remember, it's a vibe, a tech vibe, specifically. We'll see you.